This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruski. It looks like there's been some resolution in the Brian Koberger case regarding Bethany Funk, who's one of the surviving roommates. Uh, there was a uh, subpoena out saying, yeah, you need to come up to Idaho, even though she lives in Nevada now, and be re-traumatized in front of all of us for the defense of Brian Koberger at the uh, preliminary hearing coming up in June. However, compromise has taken place. She has agreed to an interview with the suspect's attorney. Now, the word interview is what has been released and published. And the question about interview is two things. Is this an interview or is this a deposition? There are two very different things when you're talking about talking to a witness versus uh, having them in the courtroom. Interview, deposition. What do the two things mean? Let's break that down a little bit. Then I'm going to tell you a little bit about what the agreement was uh, that they came to finally uh, for her giving her side of the story, which is already on record, by the way. She's been interviewed. She's been interviewed by police many times, but they want to question her again. Deposition. Talk about that. Deposition means it's sworn. It's usually multiple attorneys present. There's a court reporter. Questions are asked by the opposing attorney. And the court can play a role. It is uh, just like going into a trial, if you will, and being on the stand and, and answering questions and, uh, and, and being on the record. In interview, notes are taken. It's informal. Sometimes recorded. Sometimes attorneys are there. Not sworn, though. There's no court reporter. It's very different. And an interview has already been done. Many interviews have already been done. So why why this subpoena demand was out there earlier in the week and now it's gone to an interview? Okay. Well, what kind of exculpatory evidence do you think she has if we're going and lowering the bar to just an interview. 21 year old Funk will meet with Koberger's attorneys in Reno, Nevada, where she now resides. This development comes after Funk filed a motion to dismiss the subpoena sub- uh, submitted by Koberger's defense team, which demanded her appearance at the preliminary hearing in Idaho on June 28th. Koberger is currently in custody on four counts of murder, one count of felony burglary. He was arrested in Pennsylvania on December 30th, six weeks after the lifeless bodies of Kaylee Gonzalez, Madison Mogan, Zena Kernodal, and Ethan Chapin were all discovered on their off-campus home in Moscow. It was a horrific scene. It's something we've been covering from day one, and it's something that is just mind-blowing that a human being could do this to others. On the night of the murders, Funk and another roommate, Dylan Mortensen, were home during the early morning hours when the unspeakable acts took place. According to a police report, Mortensen awoke around 4 a.m. only to be confronted with a heart-stopping sight, a masked intruder outside her door. In a state of sheer terror, Mortensen locked herself in her room and neither she nor Funk reported the crime to police for another eight hours. In shock, Mortensen's harrowing account of that night has been included in a search warrant for Brian Koberger's property, Funk's recollections have never been made public. Both survivors were interviewed separately by the police and cooperated with the murder investigation, but the contents of Funk's interview have remained a closely guarded secret. At the time of the killings, Koberger was a doctoral student in criminal justice at the nearby Washington State University in Pullman. In the subpoena filed in Nevada, Koberger's legal team argued that Funk possessed exculpatory knowledge that cannot be provided by another witness. However... Funk's testimony vehemently disagreed, stating that the defense claim was without support. There's no further information or detail pertaining to the substance of this testimony. Its materiality 
or the alleged exculpatory information of Miss Funk or why it would be entertained at the preliminary hearing, the filing stated. But they got together. They made a compromise. Throughout the investigation, authorities have maintained that both Funk and Mortensen were cooperative witnesses, united in their grief and their shared experience of the unimaginable horror of that night. The two survivors now bear matching tattoos of their slain friends' initials, a constant reminder of the loved ones that they lost on that fateful night of sheer terror. This is an examination of the hidden human condition. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. The Hidden Killers Podcast. With Tony Bruschi. What do you think? You can weigh in on any of the stories that we're talking about. You can call us 24-7-888-554-5537. 888-5-KILLER to weigh in with your thoughts and feedback. We would love to hear it. I'm Tony Bruschi. Stay with us. Stay with us.